Hi, Devin from T Equipment here. Today we're going to be talking about the FLIR C5 and the SeekShot Pro. Two cameras that are in the sub $1,000 range that are really an excellent tool for anyone who wants to add thermography to their portfolio. Uh, the C5 is a little bit newer. The Shot Pro has been out a couple years. Uh, so let's uh, look at the specs really quick and then we'll show some, some pictures, some side-by-side -side images. Now the FLIR C5 has got a 160 by 120 pixel array, and that's about the minimum recommended for a lot of thermography applications. It, that uh, size detector meets the ResNet standard for home inspectors. The SHOT Pro, on the other hand, has got a 320 by 240 pixel array. And while more pixels is always better, that's about four times as many pixels as a 160 by 120. Uh, you, you don't necessarily want to just look at the pixel count, uh, particularly when it comes to these two cameras. Uh, otherwise, they're very much similar. They have a better than 70 millikelvin sensitivity rating, which is the minimum quantized uh, amount that the detector can discern between pixels. So that equates to 0 0.07 degrees Celsius, but that's, that's really more about contrast than actual accuracy. They're both gonna be about plus or minus two degrees Celsius for most applications. It changes a little bit depending on the temperature range, but that's not too important. The, speaking of the temperature range, the FLIR C5 goes from negative four to uh, over 700 degrees Fahrenheit, whereas the SEEK goes from negative 40 to 600 degrees Fahrenheit. So a little bit of a difference there. Um, most of the time when you're using these, that upper temperature range isn't gonna come into play, um, but it is important if you are working at those, you know, plus 500 degrees temperatures. I wouldn't recommend using thermography under uh, freezing in any event because you get a lot of, a lot of problems. But if for whatever reason, having below negative 4F was important, seek going down to negative 40 is a plus. Uh, field of view is roughly the same, 54 by 42 degrees, relatively wide angle on the C5. Shot Pro is 55 by 43. They both have a three and a half inch touch screen display. And they both have a visual camera that they use to, uh, in different ways, combine the thermal image and visual image. FLIR has their proprietary MSX, which uh, does a good job of showing the outlines of visual features on your thermal image. Uh, the Shot Pro has what they call Seek Fusion, which is a little bit more of a layer blending opacity um, thing. So the FLIR definitely wins with their MSX. Um, there's a reason they have it trademarked. Uh, but that's, you know, that's just the visual image. It has no effect on the, the actual quality of the thermal image. Uh, the visual shooter themselves on the C5 is a little bit nicer. So that's a five megapixel visual camera versus a 640 by 480 or 0.3 megapixel on the Shot Pro. Again, has nothing to do with the actual thermal image, but if you wanted to have high quality visual images, the C5 is gonna do a better job of that. Uh, they both have Wi-Fi, so you can link them to your phone and instantly send images wherever they need to go. Uh, you can do some editing on your phones. Um, with the Seek, that's really, aside from directly on the camera, uh, to do it on the phone is how you edit the, the images. The FLIR is going to be able to do that, plus engage with FLIR's free desktop software, FLIR Tools, and that's going to do a better job at making professional reports. So if you wanted to make reports, the C5 is probably more up your alley. 
The other thing that the, seat, the FLIR has is Bluetooth connectivity, which is going to be a little bit easier to pair with your phone than, than Wi-Fi. Um, we'll just do it automatically. And if your phone supports it, that's going to enable you to utilize FLIR's new cloud service called FLIR Ignite. So think of that like Google Photos, but for your thermal images. So anytime you snap an image, if it's connected to a local Wi-Fi network or connected to your phone over Bluetooth and that has an internet connection, it'll automatically upload your thermal images. Uh, they're both under nine Hertz. The Seek actually specs it at nine Hertz, whereas FLIR says it's 8.7 Hertz. So that means you won't have any problems taking these out of the country if needs be. Um, and additionally, uh, FLIR has a new uh, interface option on their, their camera, what they call one touch level and span. Uh, so you just you're look, say you're looking at a scene instead of manually dialing in the the temperature bounds for the the color grade gradation um, or allowing it to just select the hottest and coolest parts of the scene uh, it can uh, determine it based on just tapping an area of interest which can be useful if you have some very hot or very cool things throwing the automatic level and span out of whack. Uh, you, can, you can adjust all of that on the Seek as well. They all have multiple color palettes and are really just great devices. But in a lot of cases, the FLIR has the edge. Uh, a lot of it's by virtue of being newer, but also FLIR has overall higher quality sensors and noise reduction algorithms. So their sensor, even at 160 by 120, is going to compete and in a lot of cases beat the Seek's 320 by 240 sensor. So let's, uh, let's take a look and see, see how that actually looks on the cameras. All right, so now we're all warmed up here. Uh, take the C5 and, and look at some of the some of the chips, and you, know, you can see got some fine detail. These both have the same minimum focus distance, um, so you can you can get pretty close, about about four inches on either for the thermal image. It's different if you want to try and use the MSX or Seek Fusion. That takes about a foot. To clear up the parallax issues and you know this is this is pretty pretty clear for a for a 160 by 120 um, it's definitely a lot clearer than the previous generation with the 80 by 60 sensor now here's our our shot pro this 320 by 240 Oh wow, look at that detail. You can really see the fine granular components here. Again, just letting the camera determine the level and span. Now well, there's a little, I'm not entirely sure if this is reflections or, um, you know, true thermal temperatures. You can see as I get really close, the, the fixed focus lens doesn't, doesn't work as well. But overall, on these small details, the 320 by 240 does provide a clear image. You can see the individual components on, on this chip right here. 
again on the C5, you just don't have that same level of detail. It's, it's very good. And this isn't an ideal use case for either of these cameras. You know, the, the 320 by 240 on the, on the Seek is uh, definitely a little, bit, a little bit sharper in this instance. The interface on both of these is really, really shows how much work that the, the software guys over at FLIR put in because this interface is miles, miles better than the, than the Seeks. I, I was fiddling around with this for a minute and I can't really adjust the, the level and span in the same way that I thought I should be able to. I mean, it has all your color palettes right there and you can change your image mode and do different spots and draw temperature boxes. And that's all good. But kind of left scratching my head. Whereas on the, on the FLIR, it's, it's quite simple. You got the camera mode, gallery mode, and settings. And change your measurement parameters, which you can change your emissivity here on the Seek, but it's not quite as clear. And if I go back to the camera mode, it has its own submenu, which just gives a little more intuitive detail, a few more options, overall just a more professional presentation on the software basis. Oh, here's this one touch level and span I was talking about before. Just, there's, there's everything all blown out. And then if I just tap, it'll, it'll change it. See, I actually turned back on MSX. So I gotta back out to a foot to have things align again. But just tap. And there you go, you get full thermal contrast on whatever the area of interest is. So that's about it when it comes to the cameras. The, they both list for $699. Make sure to check the Equipment website for the most current prices. And give us a call if you need a quotation. Uh, the Shot Pro with its more pixels provides a greater level of detail, but the C5 offers the support for the reporting software. Uh, it has FLIR's MSX, and it has the new FLIR Ignite cloud service. And the 160 by 120 sensor, you don't necessarily miss the detail that you get on the Shot Pro particularly with all the other benefits. But if you have any more questions or want to get one in your hands to try out, give us a call. Again, my name's Devin, thermographer here at T-Equipment. Thanks so much for watching our video.